In this video, we're going to be talking about the Deutsch Yoza algorithm, which was proposed in 1992 by David Deutsch and Richard Yoza. What's interesting about this algorithm is that it was one of the first ones to show how a quantum computer can solve certain functions faster than a classical computer can. It's interesting because it gives us a really good understanding of exactly what it means to make calculations in parallel universes at the same time and then to combine our results at the end. So without further ado, let's look at the problem definition to give us a better understanding of exactly what this question is asking. So what this problem is, is we're given a function called the oracle function represented right here. Its input can be an arbitrary number of zeros and ones. But we're not allowed to look inside the oracle function. But what we do know about it is that it outputs either one of two things, either a zero or a one. Now, what we're looking for in this problem is to find out whether the oracle function is constant or balanced. Now, what do I mean by that? If the oracle function is balanced, it means it outputs an even number of zeros and ones. If the oracle function is constant, it means it outputs all zeros or all ones. And for the purposes of this question, that's the only two possibilities. It can't output anything besides constant or balanced outputs. Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples of constant and balanced functions to make this more clear. So here we have an example of a balanced function. So this one's pretty simple. If the input is even, the function outputs a 0. And if the input is odd, it outputs a 1. And here we see in the table that if we input a 0 or 2, then sure enough, our output is 0. And if we input a 1 or a 3, then once again, our output is 1. And because there's an even number, or the same number of zeros and ones that it outputs, this function is a balanced function. So here's an example of a constant function. It's also pretty simple. No matter what input you put into it, it always outputs zero. And here we see that, sure enough, no matter what the input is into this function, it always outputs zero. And because it does so, it's a constant function. If it also outputted all ones, it would also be a constant function. Now, the fastest that a classical computer can solve this question is 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1, which basically means 1 plus half. Now, why is this so? So, remember that we're not allowed to look inside the oracle function, so we don't know whether it's the odd or even function or the constant function we were looking at previously. So say we inputted 0, 0, and 1, 0 and got the output 0, 0. In order to be sure whether this function was constant or balanced, we would need to put 1 plus half, so 1 more over half, in order to figure it out. If this outputted 0, then we know it was a constant function because we would know all of these would have to be zero. And it can either only be constant or balanced. And if it outputted a one, then we would know that it's a balanced function. So we have to, for a classical computer, put one plus half of n into the, the oracle function to figure it out. However, with the deutsch yoza algorithm, we only have to run the oracle function once. And this is really remarkable because it shows us how using a quantum computer can solve some questions faster than a classical computer can. So let's try to get our heads around this by running this on the simulator. So here we have a simple implementation of a circuit for solving the deutsch yoza algorithm. So there's essentially three different steps to this equation. The first is we apply Hadamard gates to all the different qubits that we're examining. 
Now, this can be represented by this equation here, which is similar to the equation we saw for the Hadamard gates in the last lectures. The difference is we're now applying these gates to multiple different qubits, to n amount of qubits. And what we're also doing, what this value of x represents, is that we're going to be inputting multiple different uh, possible states of x in parallel universes into the oracle function. It's going to calculate these different inputs in their parallel universes, and as we'll see, we'll combine them all at the end. So if you go back to the simulator, the next step is applying the oracle um, function. Now this is, it's similar to the odd and even gate. It's a bit different, but the, the important point is that it also outputs a balanced number of zeros and ones. So it's the same amount of zeros and ones. So we can represent that oracle function by this equation here, where we're now essentially putting the different inputs of x into the oracle function. And what the final step is, is then just to apply the Hadamard gates back on the qubits we've just put into superposition and do a final measurement. And we can represent that by this complex equation, which essentially what it's doing is adding up all the different possible amplitudes of the, the qubits put through this oracle and summing them, them all up with like a, a bitwise vector. We end up resulting with this, which is the probability of whether y equals zero. So what this does is it measures the, the amplitudes of the qubits, of, which is essentially the probability of them being a certain equation, which all we have to do is input zero in, into here, or an n number of zeros, to see whether this, um, to see the probability of whether this is what it's going to output. Now, what ends up happening is we can see here that the output of the function, if it's balanced, is going to cancel each other out. Why? Because if, if function x output zero, then this equation is going to result in one. If function x outputs one, then this equation here outputs negative one. So we can see that since we're adding them all up, that if we keep adding up one plus one plus one plus one, essentially what's going to happen is the probability of it is going to equal one at the end. If it's balanced, so if there's an even number of ones and negative ones, the probability of it equaling zero is going to be zero. So when we finally run this algorithm, look at the results, we can see that this balanced function, all the amplitudes are canceling each other out. So the probability of us reaching zero is going to be zero. We can see that all of the possible outcomes, there's no zero output here. It doesn't happen because this function is balanced and not constant. Now, if we were now to apply a constant function, which is this one similar to the, the one we saw earlier, if we run this, we can see now that the outcome is with 100% certainty zero. So we now know just by running one instance of this algorithm, we, we can figure out whether a, this oracle function is constant or balanced. So like, if we were to apply all not gates to this, run it again, you see the same outcome. This is also a constant function, so the output is zero with 100% certainty. So another helpful way of understanding this is through constructive and deconstructive interference. So when um, two qubits are in phase, 
what happens is the amplitudes essentially add on to each other and produce a wave that is a combination of the two phases to produce one that's bigger than the original two. But when the qubits are out of phase, they cancel each other out and end up producing a zero probability wave. So here we can imagine the constructive waves as the um, constant function. So in these parallel universes, the, the waves of the qubits are adding on to each other and end up resulting in a probability wave of one of resulting in all zeros. But when the function is balanced, these waves end up canceling each other out and the probability of outputting all zeros results in zero. There's no probability of outputting zero, which is what we've just seen on the simulator. So there we have it, a quantum algorithm that can solve a problem faster than a classical computer does. As we saw, it does this by making calculations in parallel universes and adding up all the results in the end. Now this is quite exciting because it begins to show the potential that quantum computing can have. Now the deutsch yoza algorithm isn't very practical. You don't really need to know whether a function is constant or balanced very often. But as we'll see in the next video, there's other algorithms that do solve pragmatic value and show even further the potential that quantum computers have.